The game Ixion takes place on the ship The Tycoon, with you as its administrator. As administrator, you must secure humanity's future following the lunaclism which destroyed the Earth. By exploring various star systems while maintaining the integrity of the ship and the welfare of its crew. In short, it's like the love child of Homeworld and Frostpunk. If you're a fan of colony management games with a stellar soundtrack, or you just enjoy building cities that are a giant circle, then I'd highly recommend picking it up. One of the things that stands out about the ship is its weird shape. It's a giant ring, kind of like a donut with a rocket engine in the middle. This is what is known as a Taurus, a theoretical ship design popularized by more realistic sci-fi movies like Interstellar or 2001 A Space Odyssey. But why is it like this? Well, as we know, in space, astronauts experience weightlessness. However, this doesn't mean that there isn't any gravity in space. It's because to be in orbit is to be in a perpetual state of freefall, similar to what you'd experience on board a parabolic flight. The main difference being that to be in orbit means traveling horizontally so fast that the ground or dense atmosphere isn't there as you fall. Due to this weightlessness, astronauts experience a significant loss of bone and muscle density, and even decreased heart health over time. In order to try and counteract this, astronauts must regularly exercise using resistance machines or cycling, since things like weightlifting really wouldn't work without gravity. This of course brings us back to Ixion. The long-term health problems of microgravity alone would be a good enough reason to try and find a solution not to mention its logistical problems. For example, a simple task like cleaning becomes a new challenge, as dust and debris wouldn't simply settle out on the ground without gravity. Most sci-fi media either completely ignores this issue, or comes up with some technobabble explanation for artificial gravity. But in turn, we get to have more unique ship designs, like in Star Trek or Mass Effect. The Taurus ship design creates artificial gravity in a way you've already experienced, such as on an amusement park ride, or simply just driving in a car. That is centrifugal force. Let's go back to the basics. Newton's first law, inertia. An object at rest remains at rest, and an object in motion remains in motion, at a constant speed, and in a straight line, unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. This is why you feel a strong force pushing you to the outside when you make a quick turn during a ride. So a torus works by spinning fast enough that those standing on it will experience a force similar to that of the gravity on Earth. But then, that autistic inquisitive side of my brain just started asking, how much gravity is actually there on the Tycoon? To figure this out, we need to pull up the formula for centrifugal force. From there, we need to find the radius of the circle, and the revolutions per minute. The RPM should be the easy part. Time, or days in the game, is measured in cycles. One cycle is supposed to be one revolution of the station. However, the clock on the bottom does not match up with the rotation seen on the exterior view of the ship. The cycle counter takes one minute and five seconds to complete a rotation, while the exterior view takes eight and a half minutes. This is in real time, and this is it with the speeds matched. This is our first problem, but we'll get into that rabbit hole later on. For purposes of the video, I'll calculate it using both speeds. Cool, so now we just need to find the radius. And for this, we need to do a little bit of algebra. Circumference is 2 times pi times the radius. So to solve for the radius, we need to take the circumference divided by 2 pi. Now to figure out the circumference, we know that the ship is made of six symmetrical sectors, and the area they walk on is the area that we need 1g of force, so this is our circumference. Each sector is 56 square tiles long, and judging by the doors and people on the map, we can judge that each tile is approximately 1.5 to 2 meters wide. So a sector is around 112 meters long, multiply that by 6 sectors, and we get 672 meters give or take without the gates in between the sectors. So, for now, we'll just calculate with what we have. 672 meters divided by 2 pi, or 6.283, gives us 106.955 meters for the radius. Now, all we need to do is plug everything into our g-force formula. Using the exterior view's blazing speed of 0.118 RPM, we hit a whopping 0.002 G's, and with the cycle counter's faster speed of approximately 1 RPM, we get 0.119 G's, 
which is less than the gravity on the moon. This means that no one on this ship should be able to walk around like this. Basically, if the tycoon were to actually have 1g of gravity, then one cycle should take just 20 seconds, or 3 RPM. And even an RPM of 2 would give us a gravity slightly stronger than that on Mars, at 0.47 Gs, which could potentially make hauling resources around the ship a bit easier than with Earth's gravity. So yeah, that's the thing you know now. Do with that what you may. Now I'm off to go take a cold shower because I just did math for fun. If only school were half as engaging.